Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question climbing stairs. So this question is a pretty famous one. And I feel like once you understand this, you can do a lot more uh, recursively based questions. Okay, and also one more thing, if there are any questions that you want me to solve, just let me know down in the comments. I'll try to get them solved for you. Okay, so in this question, you're climbing a staircase and it takes n steps to reach to the top. Each time you can either take one step or you can take two steps. And what you need to output is how many ways you can climb to the top. So let's say uh, you have two stairs. So the input is two. You can climb two ways. You can take one step and then you can take another step. So two one steps or you can take one step with the length of two, right? So you have two ways. So you're going to output two. So let's just try to understand uh, this question in more detail and how we can actually use recursion to solve it. So before we actually get into the question, let's try to understand a few base cases that we have for this question. So the main one is what happens when n is equal to zero? And the answer is when n is equal to zero, the answer is one. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but you have zero steps. So what can you do? And the truth is you can only do one thing which is take zero steps. You have no other option. So when you have zero steps, you do, your answer is going to be one. Now the other two cases are a lot more easier to understand. We have n equals one and n equals two. When n is equal to one, you can only take one step. So you can only have one possible solution. And when n is equal to two, you can do one of two things. You can either take two single steps or you can take one step. Oh, let me say that again. Or you can take one double step. So you have two options. So these three over here are kind of our base cases and we're gonna make everything revolve around that. So for our example, let's say we have four stairs. We'll have an n value of four. Let me just draw that out so you can kind of visualize it. So this is our fourth step, third, second, and first. And we got our person per se who's starting over here. So he's all happy. All right, so n is equal to four. We need to find the answer for this. And what this really is, it kind of boils down to a tree. So at the top, you have the value of n. So we have four stairs. And let's kind of break this down furthermore. How can we get to four stairs? That's the question we need to ask. So in order to get to the fourth stair, you can either take one step. So if you take one step, you will be taking one step from three to four. So that's one of the ways you can get to the fourth step. Take one step from three to four. And what is the other way you might be asking? And the other way is you can take two steps. So you can take two steps starting from two. So you go from two to three and then three to four. So you're taking two steps. So over here you have two options. Either take one step or two steps. And think of it like this. The question you're asking is what are the possible ways I can get from somewhere to the fourth step and the answer in this case is I can either take one step from three to get to four or take two steps from two to get to four so everything is going to revolve around this and let me just show you how so if I take one step I start at three if I take two steps I'm going to start at two now we have that and currently we're either at three or two depending on how many steps we took now the question we need to be asking again is how can I get from somewhere to three. And let's break it down again, same thing. If I take one step, I'm gonna be starting from two and it's gonna be from two to three, one step. Or I'll be taking two steps starting from one and all the way to three, so plus two. So those are the two ways that I have. So either take one step or two steps. If I take one step, I'll be starting from two. If I take three steps, I'll be starting from, from one. So that's all we have. Now let's do that for two, just, let me just remove this real quick. Okay. And once you get to one, uh, so you can take one step or two steps. But obviously, if you take two steps, that's not possible. So we're going to just cross this out. It's not going to be an option. And if you take one step from zero to one, that's our answer, as simple as that. And I know this is a little bit clustered, but uh, so for two steps, I can either take two steps starting from zero or I can take one step starting from one. And again, let's uh, break down the one further more. And that's if I take one step, I'll be starting from zero. So we got the left part of her tree kind of figured out. Now let's look at this right part. So same thing. So you have two. I either take one step 
from 1 or I take 2 steps uh, from 0. And for 1 again, I can't take 2 steps, I can only take 1 step and starting from 0. Now, you might be asking, well, how does this give me the answer? And let me show you that. Just one second. Okay, so our answer is going to be all the paths we can take. So one of the paths we can take is from 4, go to 3, from 3, go to 2, from 2, go to 1, and from 1, go to 0. So this is one of our paths. So we're going to cross. So I'll just count this as 1. And what is our second path? Same thing, 4 to 3, 3 to 2, and then instead of uh, 2 to 1, we'll be going from 2 to 0. This is our second path. So there, we have a second path. And similarly, I'm pretty sure you understand by now. So this is our third path over here. And then over here, this is our fourth path. And if we do one more, this is our fifth path. And so when we have four stairs, our answer is five. That means that when we have four stairs, we have a total of four possible ways to get from zero all the way to four. And this over here can be represented as a tree like I just showed you over here. And as with most tree-based questions, we can use recursion in order to solve this. But one thing I kind of want to point out is you will be making the same call several times. What do I mean by that? So over here, n is equal to 2 and n is also equal to 2 over here. And what is going to happen is we're going to be calling n is equal to 2 two times. And that is just a waste of time and memory because uh, we, we already found the solution to it once. So why are we calling it the second time? So in order to avoid this, we're going to be using something called memoization. All it is, is just storing that value in some sort of dictionary in our case. And if that n value comes up again, we're just going to refer to that dictionary since it already has a value stored for us. So like I said earlier, we're going to be storing our values in some sort of dictionary. So over here, I'm going to have a cache. It's going to be outside of the function because if it's inside of the function, each time we call the function, we're going to start off with an empty dictionary. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be outside of our function. So now let's kind of define our base cases. So we have if n is equal to 0 or if n is equal to 1, then in either of those cases, our value is going to be 1. So then in that case, we're going to return 1. And now since we're storing all of our values in some sort of dictionary, so the cache, we're going to see if we already call that n value. So if n in cache, and in that case, we're going to return self.cache and then uh, whatever the value of n is. So we're going to return that. And if none of these are the case, so in that case, that means that we've still not computed the value of n. So we're going to have a variable called result, so res, and we're going to call it on whatever that n value is. So there are two ways to get to the n value, n minus 1 and n minus 2. So we're going to add those two. So self dot climb stairs. So we're going to call the function on n minus 1. And we're, we're going to add that to the n minus 2. So we're going to call the function on n minus 2. And now we're going to add this value to our dictionary. So we're going to add it to our cache. So self.cache and then n is equal to whatever our result is. And after that, we're going to just return our result. And so what happens over here is, uh, let's say we have the number 4. We're going to call the function on 4 minus on 3 and 2. And then we're going to call it, uh, we're going to keep going down like this. So we're going to do 3 minus 1, 3 minus 2. We're also going to do 2 minus 1, 2 minus 2, all the way until we reach the ending. And once that happens, we're just going to return our result. Okay, so now let's submit this. Oh, okay, sorry. So this over here is wrong. I, I typed if for some reason. All right, there we go. This should fix our problem. Okay, uh, yeah, one more mistake I made. Um, I can't just call. So this over here is supposed to be self.cache. And let me just check if I did that for everything else. Okay, yeah. Okay, hopefully this get, gets accepted right now. And yeah, so our solution was accepted. And so this is what I thought of when I first saw this question. And this is what came to my mind when I saw this. But uh, when I kind of looked around online of what other people were doing, 
uh, they were comparing this to the Fibonacci sequence. And uh, they were using the same logic in order to solve this question. Okay, so let me just show you that solution real quick. So what it is, is when you have zero steps, our value is one. When we have one step, our value is one. So it's just like the say, uh, Fibonacci sequence. So the next one, so this is the value for zero steps, this is the value for one step, and the value for two steps is gonna be one plus one. So it's gonna be two. The value of three steps is gonna be one plus two. So the past two elements, so it's gonna be three. The value for four is gonna be three plus two, five. So this is how the Fibonacci sequence is. Uh, so the value of five stars, just to show you, is gonna be the past two elements. So we have three and we have five, and we're gonna add them up and it's gonna be equal to eight. So this is the Fibonacci sequence and our stairs follow the same kind of idea. And so we can just implement that real quick and see how that looks like. Okay, so in order to do that, let me just reset this real quick. Okay, so we're gonna have two values. Uh, we're gonna have an A and we're gonna have a value of B and they're both gonna start off at one and one. Think of A as zero and think of B as one. So now that you have this, uh, we're going to go inside of a for loop. So for i in range n, okay, and then, and now each time, so we're going to replace our value. So the a value is going to have, so a is going to have the value of b, and b is going to have the value of a plus b. So a plus b, and then after we're done, we're just going to return a. Sorry, return a. And as you can see, our solution did get accepted. Um, and finally, do let me know if you have any questions or if you have some sort of better solution. And thanks a lot for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you, guys.